Ready, steady, go. Hypersonic weapons are in development all around the world, but there is one which has entered service right now. Russians always had a tradition of fast missiles. During the Cold War, weapons like the AS-4, the AS-6, AS-17, SSN-26, B-700, B-800, they all have been characterized by flight trajectories at high Mach numbers, relying on speed to avoid the defenses at the expense of maneuverability. The advantages of speed are easy to understand. The defender has a short time to react. The effectiveness of the area defenses is greatly reduced. The weapon itself has a lot of energy that is added to the effect of the warhead. The 3M22 Circon follows in the same tradition, but it brings it to a new level. The development of hypersonic weapons in Russia goes back to the second half of the 90s, when news and pictures of experimental vehicles started to percolate in the news. What was going on was unclear, but it can be safely assumed that, quietly, the NPO Machinostroyenia Bureau developed the technology required for the hypersonic flight. This included the aerodynamic configuration, the way to withstand the hit while guiding and steering the missile, and the scramjet engine with their peculiar fuel. Scramjet is the acronym of Supersonic Combustion Ramjet, which is a particular type of ramjet engine where the combustion happens at a supersonic speed. It is a fascinating subject in itself, but we won't cover it in detail here. For now, it is enough to say that these engines are essential for hypersonic flight, because they are the only air-breathing engines that can actually operate at hypersonic speed. The first prototypes of the Zircon were tested in 2012, and they were air-launch variants. The first completely successful test was achieved in 2016. During the following year, the missile demonstrated the ability to cruise at Mach 8, definitely hypersonic. The ship launch qualifications are being completed as we are filming this video. The missile is expected to become operational in 2020 on board of the two cruisers Piotr Velikia and Admiral Nakimov in the occasion of some refitting works. In 2017, a senior Russian officer declared that the missile was already operational, but it appears that the claim was not accurate. We don't have a Circon official picture, which is weird, but we have some information about the weapon, even if this means actually assembling information from a great variety of sources. Technologically, it is a hypersonic cruise missile it is accelerated from the launch to high supersonic speed by a rocket booster, then a scramjet engine picks up the job of accelerating the weapon to an estimated cruise speed of about Mach 8. The weapon itself is quite large, being probably a little shorter than 10 meters in length, but of a size such that it can be launched by the same 3S-14 launchers of the Onyx and Caliber missiles. It can be launched vertically by a missile cell on a ship or a submarine, or even a terrestrial tail. But it is very likely that an air launch version is being developed because various tests have been performed by air launch. In this case, the weapon should be shorter and lighter because it won't be launched from a sea level and from a stationary platform. So we expect the booster to be smaller and lighter. The performance of an hypersonic cruise missiles depend heavily on the launch profile. Launched from sea, it is expected to have a range of about 400 km, but the weapon is also expected to be able to fly a semi-ballistic trajectory. In this case, the range is probably going to reach about 1000 km. 
However, the practical range, whatever the flight profile is, is likely much, much shorter, say at 70% of the max, since an hypersonic weapon, to maintain all of its effectiveness, must reach the target while still flying at hypersonic speed, and its path is longer than the straight line from the launcher to the target. We don't have an official picture of the weapon, but we can get an idea of its configuration by the pictures of the Brahamos II. This is a hypersonic weapon currently being developed jointly by Russia and India. It is expected to be, actually, the export version of the Zircon. It appears to have the lift and body surf table-like configuration, which is typical of many hypersonic designs. This is dictated by the narrow shockwave angle and the necessity to limit the extent of the aerodynamic surfaces, which are more vulnerable to the scorching temperature of the speed. The air intake seems to be on the bottom of the weapon with a simple classic square geometry. The engine seems to be quite long, so there is room for plenty of shockwaves before reaching the combustion chamber. At the tail end of the weapon there is a quite substantial rocket booster, which is required to accelerate at a speed around Mach 4 to allow the scramjet to pick up the job. The booster is likely discarded after the burn is over. The nature of the Zircon guidance system is still open to discussion. In an anti-ship role, ideally, it should be an active radar guidance system, possibly complemented by a passive infrared microwave and inertial slash GLONASS guidance. It would be reasonable to expect that the weapon had a two-way data link, even though this particular has never been disclosed. The designer states that the missile was derived from the P-800, which honestly seems unlikely from the point of view of the overall configuration, but it might be realistic from the point of view of the guidance system. The two weapons might share components. However, it is still not clear how the problem of the plasma envelope that forms at Mach 8 around the weapon has been solved, since the plasma may interfere with the communications and the radar. Actually, there is a flip side to this. The plasma envelope should contribute to the reduction of the weapon's rather signature. But, as we have seen in a previous video, it shouldn't be terribly effective. The missile is going to enter service with the ship launch version first. We can speculate that it is an asymmetric reply to the US sea control capability. The preferred targets are probably the carrier groups and, as we have seen in the previous video, it has a good probability of being effective against them. Considering the shape of the weapon, the warhead should be rather small, but the energy of the impact is going to be tremendous anyway. Russian plans are to make it one of the standard anti-ship weapons in the fleet, demonstrating how much faith the developers have put into this approach. A land attack version, though, doesn't appear to be feasible, because hardened or subterranean targets might indeed resist better than ships. Additionally, the range is relatively short for a land attack cruise missile. However, what we are definitely going to see is an air launch version which would improve the Russian sea denial capability. We are just at the dawn of the diffusion of this type of weapons and the Zircon is just the first to reach the operational stage. I am sure there will be a lot to talk about in the coming years. In the meanwhile, if you like this video, you might also like the videos shown beside me. Please subscribe and hit the bell so you won't miss anything. Thank you very much for watching. Goodbye.